If you want to get the best results from a castor oil cleanse and prefer not to waste time, then this video is what you're looking for. I am going to share with you three meals I eat before doing a castor oil cleanse for the best stomach happiness results. These pre-cleanse meals are delicious and strategically designed to prepare our bodies for ultimate cleansing detoxification experience. An experience that can aid our bodies in releasing excess fat cells. Are you ready to nourish, cleanse, and revitalize your body from the inside out? Then here we go. Over the years of trying a multitude of detoxes and cleanses, I have noticed that most left me feeling sluggish, weak, and beyond hangry during the cleanse and for days afterwards. So when I I came across a cleanse where I felt incredible renewed energy, lightness, comfortability in my body, and belly flatness. <laughs> I knew I had found a treasure. The remarkable healing benefits of castor oil I came to know after having a huge tumor surrounding my fallopian tubes removed. The day it was discovered is still so clear in my mind. The x-ray technician, while I was still lying on the exam table, called my doctor speaking in hushed whispers. He handed me the phone. I heard my doctor say something about there's a mass too large in size to capture. You need to have surgery right away and I needed to plan to be home to recover for 30 days. Everything after that was a blur. I am thankful the surgery was a success. The recovery, now that was more intensive than I had imagined. Side effects of my recovery was unrelenting gas, low bowel irregularity, overcrowding of bad bacteria that crave the very foods that control Contributed to my fair share of unwanted pounds. These cleansing meals, followed by one of several ways to use castor oil, helped during my recovery from having that tumor removed. And time and time again, when cravings, hormones, and just unwise eating, sleeping choices starts to get the best of me. Here is the two to three day pre cleanse meal formula that I do before using castor oil. Over the next two to three days of the pre cleanse, allow yourself to drink three to four cups of warm water. Do this upon waking. First, before you drink coffee, tea, or smoothie. Hydrate with water. With this rush of hydrating nutrients, my cells, organs, brain, I cannot find the words to describe the sensation. You'll just have to try it for yourself. I am not a fan of cleanses and detoxes that are devoid of natural beneficial fibers in the form of food. Not supplements, food. Whole real food. Fiber, our internal broom, sweeps out excess hormones, waste, bacteria, all of that from our colon. Fiber helps with fullness, cravings, and healthy bacteria. This pre-cleanse incorporates a good amount of gentle fiber and prebiotics. Nothing says fiber and natural prebiotics like apples in the morning. You know the saying, an apple a day keeps the doctor away. And it's a good pre-cleanse. Well, hold up. Don't eat raw apples. At least not during this time period. Not during the cleanse. I've noticed that eating raw apples before a cleanse causes too much flagellants. One of the very things we are using the cleanse to rid our bodies of. So we don't want to do that. Eating cooked apples is best. Here's the recipe. Combine two to three apples, sliced one cinnamon stick, four cloves, a half teaspoon of cardamom, a pinch of nutmeg, a teaspoon of turmeric, and one fourth cup of water. Put all of this in a saucepan. Turn on the fire, medium heat, cover, leaving a slight vent in the cover, and let it cook for about 15 minutes or until the apples become softened. Remove the pan from the heat. Take out the cinnamon stick. And this is a bonus. If you have cooking rose water on hand, two tablespoons of that, add that to the apple mixture. Mm, mm, mm. Sometimes the fiber goodness of a few apples is enough to keep me fueled and sustained. Other times it doesn't. Digestion can be fickle, right? If your stomach is saying, hey you, I'm hungry. Make a nutritious bowl of oatmeal with whole roll oats, not instant oats. For one serving of oatmeal, take one fourth cup old fashioned oats cooked in a half cup cup of water, a half cup of non-dairy milk with one teaspoon of ground flaxseed, and a dash or two of cinnamon. This simple oatmeal mix is so soothing and satisfying. Combine all of it in a pot, bring it to a boil, then reduce the heat to a low simmer. Cover with the lid slightly vented. Cook for five to eight minutes or to the consistency that you like. Try to allow yourself to enjoy with more liquid versus the more pasty oatmeal texture. I've been able to adapt this recipe for my Instapot set to cook for three minutes while I go get dressed for my workout. So that's another thing you can do if you don't want to sit there and 
babysit the oatmeal. Although five to eight minutes, that's not long. By this point in the day, you should start to notice your body feeling lighter and your energy more sustained. Let's keep that going. I don't have the time or mental fortitude for complicated meals, cleanses or no cleanse. And I suppose that is why I usually cook once, eat twice. I cook enough for lunch to be eaten at dinner time. Oh no! Not repeat eating. Well, when doing a cleanse, the goal is to lessen stress, both internally and externally. When I don't have to exhaust mental energy with food decisions, I feel and respond to life with less of a reactionary response. Besides, eating like this for only two to three days, you can ride it out. So what you make for lunch, eat it again for dinner. You can do it it's for two days. And this is what you're going to eat. You're going to rinse a half cup of yellow split mung beans, one cup of basmati or jasmine rice. Choose jasmine. Rinse it to remove some of the starchiness. That's optional, but it's highly recommended, particularly during a cleanse. Remember, we're in cleansing mode, so we want to give our body, our digestion, the least amount of work to do. The preparation of this dish can be done on a stove, in a slow cooker, or in an Instapot. I typically use my Instapot. It's the simplest for me because I have other things I want to be doing. Preheat the cooking device you'll be using. Add in a half tablespoon of ghee, one fourth cup of ground ginger, a teaspoon of crushed coriander seed, a teaspoon of crushed cumin seed, a teaspoon crushed fennel seeds, pinch of hing or asphodita. Get that at your local Indian store or I'll leave a link in the description below for you to get it off Amazon. One half teaspoon of turmeric and a half teaspoon of sea salt. Toss in the rice and the beans. Mix it all together to coat the rice and the beans with the spices and then pour in four cups of water. I set my Instapot to cook for 10 to 15 minutes. If you're using a stove, set the stove timer for 30 to 45 minutes with the flame set on medium low, the lid slightly vented. While my food is cooking, I go and have wonderful conversations <laughs> with remarkable beings, knowing that a huge hug in a bowl will be waiting for me when I am finished. To make this recipe more filling, especially for dinner time if you want, add in some chopped vegetables like zucchini, green beans, Beans, carrots and cilantro to the pot or separately steam it roast it that and any other variety of vegetables and then add that alongside or on top of the rice bean dish at both lunch and dinner eat as much as you want until your belly is full and satisfied but not stuffed do not deprive yourself thinking that eating less is better eat what your body needs and you will have less lightheadedness craving instead you will have overall success the foundation of good health starts in the belly. Eat well, stay active.